Olympic Winners Monument. Dedicated on June 6, 2012 by the World War II uh, Foundation along with our French allies from the Utah Beach Museum and with the support of the grateful citizens of the village of St. Marie du Mont in honor of Dick Winters and all of those American junior officers who led the way on D-Day, June 6, 1944. May we never forget their leadership under fire. Exit row number two. This was his designated drop zone. The brown ones, you see the brown dots? Uh -huh. This uh, first, second, five or six. And uh, the first, and uh, most of them, they they were dropped in the vicinity of Poupéville, St. Mary du Mont, and their drop zone C. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't, he was not too far off. Too far off. Uh -huh. This was, this was the location where um, they first ran into some uh, horse-drawn carriages they had to take uh, and, and they, they, they took them out uh -huh. before they were trying to find their HQ Yeah. and finally found, found their HQ. They were waiting for Mian to uh -huh. report him. But he never showed up. And then reports came in all about this mobile battery number two at Breakour Manor. Uh -huh. So then as a new company commander, he got the assignment to yeah. uh, to take it out. And you know what happened to yeah. him. We're going there now. All right. Yeah. Let's take a look. Overlord. It's a break core manor. Then the hedgerows back there, that's where the guns were. And uh, he just told me that they came around this way and enveloped them. Just like what the movie did. That's where it happened right there. We're here now. So that's the lane leading up to Breakour Manor, uh -huh. with the dead horses blocking the road. And then it's well, it's not this tree line, but it's the tree line behind. Oh, okay. Where the um, where the cannons were. I see. And no slit trenches. No slit trenches, huh? They're just out in the open, mobile. That, that was Hollywood. Uh huh. <laughs> wow. The names of the service members who are with Easy Company who passed away on June 6th. Same thing on this side, Copeland 7th, 8th, 18th.
nothing's changed here as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's so what So the gun in place is fine? Yeah. No, sorry, the fountain's yeah. there, yeah, true. Right there. That's uh, on the corner. Uh -huh. This is just another den in now picture. No, there was a fountain right there, and on the internet, there was a guy shooting. He was, yeah, he was engaging, story. he was gauging targets back that way. In that church over there, and what you just showed on this um, on this monument, mm -hmm. uh, they had um, uh, 80, um, 80, 80 um, uh, military. Uh, they treated eighty military there, and a little child from the village who was hurt by shrapnel. Uh huh. But how on earth these two guys um, were not wounded is a, is a miracle because they went out with. Um, a wheelbarrow, it's called a wheelbarrow, uh -huh. they use it at, farm, at farms. Yeah. And they went out on these little streets to get wounded and bring uh, them Americans back, huh? and bring them back. Wow. And I told you, Carantan is there uh -huh. on our left hand side. We're going straight towards a corner, mm -hmm. and you refer to it as Dead, Dead Man's, Man's corner. corner. We will be passing that corner in a minute. Uh -huh. And Dead Man's Corner is, um, was occupied by, well, the farmhouse. It wasn't called Dead Man's Corner by the Germans. Yeah. But the German Fallschirmjäger, that's German for paratroopers, uh -huh. also e e elite forces. Yeah. Um, they were well dug in, and they were not only at Dead Man's Corner, but they were already here. So 101st ended up in, in ferocious fighting here 
at this spot. Here it, it started to, well, frankly, this was the fourth post for the, 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 the defensive line uh -huh. around Carrington. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. So when That's if you look amazing. At, if you look at this picture. Frankly, where these guys are walking, that's where we are standing. Uh -huh. Because you see, there's a little, this barn here. Yeah. That's the one with the red roof over there. See yep. that? Sure. And then the big barn at the back. That's the big barn over there. Mm -hmm. So these guys are walking that direction. These were the two medics, Bob Wright and Kenneth Moore. Like babies. All right. Yeah. Hospital. They had to put their uh, their wounded uh, comrades somewhere. So the benches were used as uh, and what you will witness inside. It's impressive. Because some benches still bear the, the blood stains of the battle of 80 years ago. Yeah. E. W. That's Robert E. Wright. Oh, his ashes is here. And his ashes are put uh, underneath that. Uh, hood. Yeah, in this picture, that was exact how I met him um, when we were doing this um, Karen Tan bit too much. Karen uh, Tan, and they followed this path. They were on both sides, there was uh, hedgerows, but then there was this open space. So when they were trying to pass this open space, one of the shot was good and one of the guys fell on the ground, wouldn't it? So they all, uh, they, they all looked for cover and uh, they tried to figure out where the shot came from. So when they again tried to move up, there was a second shot. And this went on, and it was um, uh, a very agonizing that's the word, right? Mm -hmm. Agonizing thing for these, um, these American paratroopers. So uh, they had a clear vision that the shot came out of that farmhouse over there. You see at the right, you see the barn, yeah. and then you see a red roof behind the trees. And you see the red roof? Uh -huh. And then left from the red roof, there's this funny building with this hole in it like a window yeah okay they figured out there must be germans in mm -hmm. so uh the their commanding officer lieutenant ah forgot about that name, his name he sent out uh, a patrol taking a detour a detour via the country uh the countryside over there behind the um behind the tree line you see there to attack that farmhouse from the other side so 
I'm going to bring you to that little window over there. All right. Window. The hole is not a clear window. Mm -hmm. You see all kinds of holes around that window. You still see that? Bullet holes. Yeah, still bullet holes. Yeah. Coming from uh, because they were so fed up with this guy, and it seemed to be a German sniper. Because the more there were um, Germans in this uh, in this whole uh, farmhouse. Mm. And now they changed it into uh, a bed and breakfast. Oh, really? So if you want to come back, you can have your, uh, <laughs> your bed and breakfast here. <laughs> mm. uh, this is called the Ferma, Ferma Dol Deloni, um, Delone. So uh, in good English, it's called the Deloni Farm. Deloni Farm. Exactly. Yeah, got it? Yeah. Mm. Very cool. officer of uh, the 501st, Captain uh, Johnson, Jumpy Johnson, Howard Johnson, uh, landed here in pitch darkness. He didn't know where he was, but he saw in the moonlight, he saw this um, silhouette of a building. So he was curious and he went in. And by uh, doing so, he met another paratrooper. So there were two. Mm -hmm. And they were, st they were approaching the building and all of a sudden they were shot at. Mm. And so they both um, uh, hit somewhere, and um, frankly, uh, Johnson ended up in the water around this um, uh, the, the canal around the the chateau. chateau. And well, he stayed there, classic way, for some time with his straw breathing every once in a while, mm. because he, he found out that they uh, that every time he wanted to get out, he was again uh, shot at. So he moved underwater. And uh, frankly, uh, there was for him. It made no sense staying a bit longer than uh, and discovering what was uh, what was there. He knew that there was uh, it, it was some some HQ uh, German office. And um, so he, uh, he 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 bugged off and he managed to get to, to the other troops HQ reported in, and then they could go back, uh, mm -hmm. starting the battle for this uh, for this castle, on their way to Carentan. Because for us, on the right-hand side of uh, the castle, there um, there are the fields mm -hmm. that were flooded by uh, those were flooded by the Germans. So lots of 101st Airborne troopers who go, um, who ended up in that field, well, either they had a problem uh, in keeping themselves alive with 150 pounds of equipment on their backs, uh, but at least they got uh, a wet uniform, trying to get out those uh, flooded marshes. And not far from those fields, there were the locks of La Barquette. And the locks of La Barquette was one of the three objectives for the 101st. Uh, those locks had to be taken uh, from the Germans because those were giant locks. And here we go again, by opening the doors, uh, the water would go away. Not within 24 hours, but well, uh, but well, rather, rather quickly. That's an old crater of some bomb. Department left it. Now it's like a drinking uh, joint for the for the cows.
until June 6th. Uh, this terrain is used for a commemorative jump. Oh, right here, that's what they do it at? Yeah, with uh, the old Dakota. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, you can pass, guys, come on. And uh, guys dressed up in the old uniform and jumping with these uh, little canopies. Uh -huh. If you're up for a little stroll, okay. then I suggest we move to that building over there and then we have a clear view of the, bar the La Barquette Locks. Okay. One, of the, one of the objectives and the locks were uh, serving uh, uh, the water management. This was objective of the 501st. Ago, we were um, we were following the tracks of the 103rd, the 501st. Yeah. And then we, uh, the organization, told us to, to wait here. And then there was a car coming with uh, with Tom Rice in it. So uh, that was one line of GIs here. Uh, yeah. And uh, here, and then uh, we formed like a, like a, like a corridor. Uh -huh. for, uh, for Tom Rice and he was shaking hands and da, 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 da. Uh -huh. wow that is very cool yeah. there's his jeep and behind there that's where the drop zone was it's supposed to be anyways <laughs> they got spread up all over the place but the Germans had locked these locks and yeah. flooded these fields all, all down this way right all that was all flooded everywhere both sides uh-huh because they didn't they didn't know what was going to happen but at yeah. least they thought if we flood this area and we will be attacked by yeah. air at least uh this will be a burden for our enemy yeah yeah slow them down hopefully awesome You know where? Uh, you know what? Why this building got the name that Men's Corner? Because um, the little house over there, uh, that was the only house that was open. And, uh, this hangar wasn't there. Uh -huh. uh, behind there, um, uh, they constructed a new hangar. This was the only farmhouse, and in there, there were German Fallschirmjäger. That's the German word for paratrooper. Uh -huh. And they were well dug in. They had. 88 millimeters, the AK AK cannon, mm -hmm. and uh, they were they were pretty much uh, uh, modern equipped, well equipped. So uh -huh. when the the American paratroopers came here, it was a hell of a job to pass. Frankly, when they managed to uh, to chase the Germans out, uh, they got uh, thrown back again, and when um, the troops landed from uh, from Utah Beach. There was um, there was a uh, uh, there were some tanks uh, coming like the, the small one. Mm -hmm. It's a Stuart tank. Uh, it came from uh, it came from Utah Beach, and as soon as the, this tank passed this crossroad, it was, it was knocked out. Mm -hmm. And the tank commander, trying to escape from this um, from this little Stuart tank, was shot instantly. But because it was such a hot area mm -hmm. um, there was no American uh, trying to get this tank commander out of his uh, tank so he kept laying there for three days and units who passed it by the fields or whatever um, they saw this knocked out uh, steward tank with the commanding officer hanging out of the turret so this corner was referred to as ah, the corner with that man hanging out of the turret mm. that man's corner mm -hmm. And now um, the museum, the Detmas Corner, the house itself, is a beautiful museum uh, from the German.
part of um, of the battle. Mm -hmm. Then there is next to it. It's you see you see para. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, that's a little shop. You can buy uh, some authentic stuff. You can buy copy uh, copy uh, stuff. And the black building over there. That's the cinema. It has a beautiful 3D cinema, 50 minutes, 25 minutes about the uh, general situation in um, in Western Europe, and then 25 minutes focusing on what happened in Carentan and why Carentan was so important um, for the both the beaches at Omaha and Utah, because Carentan had to form a link up between uh, both of them. And then there's another hangar at the back, mm -hmm. and there they, there they have an original C-47 Skytrain, and there uh, you can enter the hangar. Uh, you will have um, a briefing by uh, Colonel uh, Wolverton, mm -hmm. Boo Wolverton, commanding officer uh, back then of the 101st. And um, well, he will take you as one of his men in the 3D presentation mm -hmm. and with him to uh, embark on the, on the planes. So I think it's a must go. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll go there tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> My handbrake doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> bridge that was taken by the 101st Airborne Division. Hmm. Carrington. We came from that man's corner, right? The yeah. crossroad uh, where the dead man uh, was hanging for three days out of the turret of a steward tank. Uh -huh. We just cr crossed bridge number one. And the side is still the original bridge. Mm -hmm. Then they had to proceed to bridge number two. Bridge number three was uh, sabotaged by the Germans, so they had to create something to uh, to move over. And then when they thought they were practically there, there was bridge number four. It was blocked with um, all kinds of structures, like uh, the Belgian gate, mm -hmm. uh, a metal construction. And if you put two next to each other, it would let only one paratrooper at a time pass direction Carentan. But then here at this farmhouse, this was the only, the first high ground, higher ground, mm -hmm. dry, dry place. And the Germans were well dug in here. This is the Madalena River. We are now here at this point. And the road leading to the Ingwood farm is 
that over there. You see the yellow house? Yeah. That's your original Ingu farm. And that's our, I will take you for our last stop for this um, uh, Carantan, uh, before reaching Carantan. Yeah. So the original farm is still there. Wow. Incredible. And all of this was, these are the locks yep. up here and they flooded everything here. Yep. So this was the only way in. Yep. Total kill zone. Total kill zone, exactly. Purple hard lane. Yeah. See them? Oh, yeah. Good side. Amazing. There's the famous house. This is where uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bob Cole is telling his story. And you see that he is standing in front of that uh, farmhouse. Yeah. It's called the Ingu Farm. And at first, when I came here for the first time, I thought that the barn was mm -hmm. after the war. But as you can see on the picture, the barn Still, has been there yeah. as well. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, on the right hand side of the barn, you see some irregular irregularities. And some bullet holes. I think so. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I can't see it from there. See a little bit of Little Swiss cheese. This is just this is a story. You need to take a picture of it. Uh -huh. Yeah, get it. Yeah. Is here? Yeah, somewhere on the other side. Right? Yeah. There's a story about this uh, village. Like uh, every other village in Normandy, this village was more than 60 70 percent completely wasted, devastated. Uh, and um, Mrs. Judels, before the war, she was uh, an American real estate lady in Paris. Uh -huh. And she didn't do, uh, well, she, she didn't do badly. So uh, <laughs> she gained, she gained not, not a lot of wealth. Huh? A lot of wealth. Yeah. And she knew what was coming. So she went back to America because she's Jewish. Oh, okay. And um, during the war, her son, Lieutenant Judels, Bob E. Judels, um, by accident, um, he happened to uh, to be part of the paratroopers. So when he got into the war and he jumped into Normandy for the 101st, then um, he jumped in, in this vicinity, saint Combe du mont mm -hmm. After the war, when Madame Judels visited Normandy and she saw what, what happened during those uh, years, she decided uh, also together with her son 
to start funding the restoration of the whole village. Oh, really? She put in lots of effort, lots of money, uh, lots of companies yeah. uh, working for her, um, uh, making sure that uh, enough provisions uh, were sent over, like medication, uh -huh. clothing for the, um, for, the, um, for, the, for the people over here, the school. Lots of kids without a school, so uh, she started with uh, restorating, yeah. uh, res restorating a building used as school. Uh, she sent in um, all kinds of stuff for mm. the kids to write with, uh, papers. There was nothing. Yeah, wow, it's amazing. And even she managed to put up uh, to put up a medic post. Uh huh. And because of um, um, the temperature back then and lots of uh, dead horses and cows in the vicinity, yeah, uh, lots of insects yeah. came to this place and these insects brought over some flu. Dis diseases. So to prevent the kids and, the, and the, the, the adults from getting this flu, there was uh, like a, a vaccination program. Uh -huh. But they had only one needle. Oh my goodness. Back then it didn't it bother. It didn't matter. Huh? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so, uh, and for the kids, um, because I told you about this uh, bridge to history thing. Yeah. Uh, for the kids, um, she constructed a program uh, to go to Paris uh, straight after, well, not straight after the war, but not long after the war, to um, to, to to give these kids some kind of of re re relief moment, uh, relief mm -hmm. moment. Yeah, huh. A moment of, of, uh, of um, well, uh, away from, from, from their hometown, okay, which, yeah. was, which was completely uh, destroyed. destroyed. Chaotic, exactly. yeah. So uh -huh. these kids, for five days, they were treated in Paris by Madame Jules um, by having um, this, this, this cruise on the River Seine, uh -huh. by going to the Eiffel Tower, having good food, uh, they were giving new clothing. Uh, she did, she did, frankly, she did everything to get this village up its feet again. Wow. And last year with the Bridge of History kids, um, I managed to, uh, in cooperation with the, the local mayor, to retrace some of these kids from then. Uh -huh. They were in their 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years. Yeah. And um, so um, last year it was 78 years. So they are, um, they, they, they are. 60s and we had in the, um, in the town hall we had this nice conversation with the, these american youngsters uh -huh. and the youngsters from back then wow and that was a very nice uh, uh -huh. get together what an experience that was huh yeah. amazing man this is cecilia jules it's a very uh, uh special story yes Joseph Burrell landed on this roof, just like Steele did over there in St. Mary Gleese. But this guy was certified badass. Fought for the Americans and then escaped as a POW in Germany. Ran into the Soviet Union, joined their army to reattack the Germans. Badass. <laughs> when he landed, there was a machine gun up in the steep. Oh, really? Yeah. He's still able to get away, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. So on D Day, he landed up here. Up on the roof. But that was the second jump, right? I think it was the second jump into into France. Occupied France. He came a couple months before to bring gold bars to the resistance. And then he flew they flew him back to England and on D-Day he came back, attacked, and then he got taken prisoner, tortured, sent back into mainland Germany, and then escaped a couple times, and then I think the second or third time he escaped. He got in touch with, the, he ran into the Soviets and uh, he joined them to go take down some more Germans, I guess. Freaking awesome. Well, he managed when he was alone. 
an escaping sink on the mop back there. There was uh -huh. a little generator house. Uh huh. And he managed to sabotage that as well, and that that was blown up. Yeah, he was an uh, explosive expert, I read, right? Yeah, uh, here you go. Uh -huh. And then he ran into a bunch of Germans, um, which on his uh, on his own, uh -huh. he, he threw two two grenades to the bunch of Germans and knocked them out as well. Oh, wow! <laughs> Amazing story. <laughs> Okay. Hey, thank you, Wilhelm, for an outstanding day. That was awesome. I Pleasure. appreciate it. Appreciate Spread it. Spread the rumor around. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Had a like fantastic it. day. And uh, good luck in the Netherlands. Yes, sir. You got my number. Whenever yep. you got a problem there, feel free to call me. Okay, man, I will do. Thank you. Same goes for the Ardennes. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, thanks for watching.